What is up, Watch Fam, and welcome to Rant TNH. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, uh, and today we're going to be talking about a very interesting uh, release from Gerard Perigal. So, uh, before we do, quick wristwatch check. I am wearing uh, a watch, a uh, Universal Geneve Pull Router Super, that is going to be released into the Theo and Harris watch shop uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tuesday, 8 a.m. So uh, be sure to be sure to rush over to the website uh, and check out uh, the six new vintage editions. We have some really awesome stuff: uh, a Ross triple calendar, a, a black like gloss style chronograph from Royce, um, a Hamilton a Tudor day date, uh, and the Omega constellation. We have some really really awesome. But uh, I'm super excited. Oh, a shirt watch check too, if that's a thing. Of course it's not. Uh, I'm wearing uh, a TNH sweatshirt designed by our own editor, Anna. Uh, this is the Genta T or Genta sweatshirt. Uh, it's it's the pole rudder, the, um, the Royal Oak, and the Nautilus. So it's really cool. Uh, anyway, let's get into today's episode. Okay, so just the other day, uh, maybe last week, uh, Gerard Perigo released the new versions of their Laureato. I believe that's how it's pronounced, uh, which is a funny, it's a funny word. It almost sounds like origato. You know, it doesn't sound like it's Swiss. Laureato. You know, I, I don't know. I don't really care for the word very much. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll get into uh, the brand first. Uh, we'll go into the history of Laureato and now to what they've most recently done. And then I'll give you my analysis. So, uh, Jord Pergo, classic Swiss manufacturer um, that is has had a really hard time. Uh, at least I think, uh, as someone who deals in the vintage market very heavily, I think that uh, I think that the Jord Pergo brand days are past. As most brands are. Most brands had their glory days already and they're just trying to, you know, live up to that again. Uh, so they're not like the loser of the group. They're just, you know, I feel like they're, they're models. They're old Seawolves and, and they're old Gyromatics. They're kind of over. Uh, even then, those watches aren't so highly valued. I typically stay away from them uh, because they just don't demand. Um, they just they just don't have much market demand. People don't look at a Gerard Perigo as, as I see it anecdotally as someone who deals in vintage watches. Uh, I don't see people dying over Gerard Perigos. They just don't. I've sold a couple Seawolves, a couple of aromatics, but it's really nothing to write home about. So, uh, so that's an interesting idea. It's this middle of the line brand that produced very, you know, good, very high quality watches, but uh, but they somehow they don't get the recognition that they might deserve. So now, fast forward, you know, 30, 40, I mean, way more than that years, uh, and they're releasing this Laureato. The Laureato was originally released in the 70s uh, as a quartz chronometer, I believe, uh, and then again in the 90s with a mechanical mechanism. It's an oddball watch. I mean, if you look at it, and here's a vintage photo of the vintage Laureatos, which I've actually never seen in real life, uh, it reminds you of one of the day dates. Reference 1831 from the Philips uh, Rolex day date auction, which was, by the way, one of my favorite auctions of all time. Uh, it has that really weird, like, just like brick kind of case. Uh, I don't know, it was a funky, funky watch. So now, fast forward to now, and they, you know, last year they released their Laureato, and this year they did a whole revamp of their model, of their line. So. Uh, last year, 2016, I believe they only released one model. I think it was 41 millimeters, uh, automatic movement. It came in two dial colors, uh, this white tapisserie and the blue, uh, same texture tapisserie. And a big criticism, you know, was it's just an AP ripoff. It's a less expensive, you know, AP. Yes, there are APs that were comparably priced. Priced, I think the 15400 was comparably priced. This one came at $15,000 and it was first introduced, which is a lot of money you know and and on my my note on that basically was this watch is a little bit ridiculous it rides way too heavily on the coattails of ap uh, i put it this way this watch looks more like the ap royal oak than it does like the original laureatos and i don't care who the f pays bloggers enough to like really creatively you know tongue twist into saying oh but it's very different than ap because that's what they do i mean you know you should see the writers and how they try to juggle around the fact uh that this watch is i mean basically stolen uh from from ap it's like a it's just a softer it's a softer royal oak uh which i yes i mean yes it is softer and that was their big point well it's not as hard edged so what I mean, you could still tell it, it steals the fundamental design elements. I mean, you don't need to be a genius to know that if you steal two major design elements, like the bezel, you know, that you're saying, okay, I mean, kind of look, you know, check the boxes. You got tapisserie dial, AP, 
you have the octagonal or, or the angular bezel. I'm not sure how many edges the, the Laureato has. Uh, and you obviously have the whole you know, steel watch, it's, you know, steel you know, bracelet sports watch with thin you know, movement. It, it, it's, it's, it's the AP. Uh, in my opinion, it's an uglier version of the AP. Uh, the one from last year, 2016, I didn't mind actually. Uh, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was fine. I would never buy one. I would never recommend someone buy one, uh, especially at fifteen thousand dollars. Maybe it's a value prop at seven, you know, because, uh, and even then, like, you know, you're talking about you're in the territory of a of a Jeje Le Coultre gyromatic. So why would I even go for this then? But the the largest the largest concern was this pricing. Um, fast forward to now, and they've released new models. They released thirty four models of this watch. Uh, which I always hate. I always hate when there are too many models of something. To me, it shows indecision. Uh, it's like Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc has all of these collections and all of these models, and it just, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, same thing with Longines, for that matter. So now, uh, just this year, this like past week, they've released uh, three models. 42 millimeters, which is a millimeter you know larger than the last one. A 38 millimeter, uh, which is kind of more of a compromise. And then a 34 millimeter with a quartz movement, which is obviously specifically designed for ladies. And uh, I I don't know, there are 34 models, and to me it just it just seems ridiculous. 34 different combos, you have two-tone. They threw in an example with, with a tourbillon, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, it doesn't seem like you're building on anything. It seems like you're just delegitimizing the, the tourbillon. You know, so what, you have, to, you have to shove one in there. You had enough money to do it, who gives a shit? You know, it doesn't really mean much to me. And now with the reintroduction of this of this model line, they made a lot of changes. They fixed some things, and to me, they've made a disaster out of plenty of them. Uh, the biggest thing that they fixed, the thing, I hate that word, that they fixed, uh, was the pricing. Uh, the pricing is now at 11,000, well, forget the trouble, yeah, the price is at 11,000 for the 42 millimeter, I believe nine and change for the 38, uh, and then below that for the 34, I don't recall. So that's obviously a huge drop. I mean, you're talking, you went from 14 and change, 15, down to 11 for basically the same exact watch. So, I mean, that's really interesting. And naturally, you know, now they're competing with the Piaget Polo S. Um, I, I, I don't know, maybe some aftermarket APs, even you know, more closely. So, so uh, fine, I, I'll give them that. I'll give them that they had the self-awareness enough to know that their pricing was ridiculous. But forget the pricing. Like, honestly, that wasn't even my biggest issue with the last watch. I just think that when you're an underdog brand like GP is, you just need to produce more and better. Like you just, you can't just steal design cues. It, it, maybe that's why you're in the position you're in. Maybe that's why no one's excited by you. I mean, you know, I, I just don't like that mentality with that loser. You know, I hate to call them a loser because you know I, it's just nasty. But next, next to larger brands like Rolex and AP, um, and and you know many other brands, you're a loser. I mean, no, no one really cares about you. More people, I bet, you know, know Baume Mercier, you know, than they know than they know GP. And Baume Mercier, although have done some really cool things, certainly isn't a top top tier, uh, uh, you know, known brand uh, and regarded brand. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cues that offend me. Some of the not offend me, that piss me off. A watch surely doesn't offend me, but uh, some of the things that piss me off. Go back to it. One, the tapisserie dial. I think that that element on its own maybe could stand without me criticizing it, but that element, you know, it, along with the octagonal bezel and along with these links, which, and along with the bracelet design, which doesn't really bother me on the bracelet, but when you throw it on the strap like they have here, it looks just like the 5711 uh, R001 or something like that, whatever that paddock is. You know, the, the Nautilus on a strap. I mean, it looks the same thing. It has that soft rectangle connector. To me, it's like, how many elements can you steal before we're pissed off? And frankly, not only did you steal these elements, but this looks nothing like your original Laureato. Have you taken any design cues from the original? I don't think so. The bezel on the original Laureato was the same, just a lot, lot thinner, and it was much less noticeable. It had that same, you know, cut, you know, kind of edges and the circle around it. So I get that that was something that you maintained, uh, but by blowing it up, by adding all these other elements, the bezel now becomes just another, you know, thing you stole from AP. I feel like back then you stole it from AP and nobody cared because it was one element. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't seem like a big deal. But now in today's market, when there are brands that are fighting, you know, basically to kill each other because the market is so quickly just dying, you gotta do better. Like you 110% have to do better. It is a buyer's market, not a seller's market, and you need to work harder to make people give a shit about you. I, I hate when people, and when brands particularly, are not doing too hot, and then have the audacity to put shit out like this. That drives me nuts. You need to be working harder. Maybe this Laureato would be an acceptable release 
if the brand was riding high and the brand was like really just killing it, fine, I get it. You rest in your laurels a little bit, you get a little bit lazy, you get a little bit unoriginal. It happens to the best of us. You know, you get a little rich and fat, I get it. But when you are GP and I can bet that no one can name another model by you apart from the Laureato, because I've said it 15 times in the last eight minutes, you need to do better. I will say, in all fairness, I do like the dials. I do, I think that there's this like color sand dial, this taupe and whitish dial, that to me are pretty. The AP doesn't make them, Paddock doesn't make them, and I respect that, because to me they add a little extra level of interest, and I can see someone falling in love with that dial. I can, um, but I would only justify it on a, on a comparably priced sports watch, and, and that dial may make me choose you, or recommend choosing you over an AP, but you're just too damn close. You know, your best element to me is in the wind because of the other things, the other, the other design elements that you've decided to just kind of just steal. You're dealing at a $10,000, $11,000 price range. You gotta do better. One final note, I mean, one final note to be a little bit more self-aware in respect to selling watches. If GP is going to steal the mass market, the people that don't know anything about watches, the people that won't notice that this looks just like the AP or you know a contorted version of the AP with a little bit of Nautilus spiced in, um, then I'm fine. I get it. But now you better market the shit out of this and you better impress me. Not that you need to impress me, but because I'm gonna make another video about this if, you know, at the end. I'm gonna make another video about this in like six months when I reflect on this and say, yep, they f***ed up or actually, hey, they did a good job. So if they're going for mass market, then they better market the hell out of this. They better do an incredible job. They're going up against Piaget. Piaget's doing the same thing. Piaget doesn't give a what I think about their watches, right? Because the Polo S is something that they're going to use to just say, you know what? Forget the watch fam. We're going for the, we're going for everybody else in the world. And I respect that, but you got a market behind that. So now if you don't do that, then that implies that you're not going for the mass market. You're going for the watch community. You're looking to be driven by the core audience. And in that endeavor, I very sadly feel that you are going to be left in the dirt because nobody that knows anything about watches can look at your watch with a straight face and not say, Come on, like, really? Is this a joke? So that's it guys, these are my thoughts on the GP Laureato. I hope that their marketing proves me wrong in the next six months to a year. I hope they sell a lot of watches, but I guess we'll see, they will determine that uh, and I will just do the reporting. So thank you guys for watching, Rent TNH. Don't forget to check out the watch shop at theoandharris.com, including this killer Universal Geneve Pole Router Super.